The hills are alive with the sounds of fountain pen shootouts. And today, we are going to talk about a number of calligraphy pens. Um, I was asked to do a shootout on fountain pen calligraphies, no, calligraphy fountain pens, um, and I think it's very interesting. Now the problem is, what makes a fountain pen a calligraphy pen? I have a couple of italic nibbed fountain pens. Um, I have some stub nibs, like on this Monteverde Invincia. Um, this is a, a stub, so it's it's not a, a rounded nib, it's just flat. I think... I mean, which pens to include? I could include that pen. This is a calligraphy pen. No, I think that's a regular fountain pen, whereas this is a calligraphy pen. Uh, it has a very wide nib, 4B, so quadruple broad, uh, and it's actually marketed as a calligraphy pen. I could include the Visconti Rembrandt in orange, which I have but I didn't because that is an italic nib. I wanted to focus on italic nibs because of course when you say calligraphy pen you could also talk about pens made for um, uh, we call it a copper plate script for example. That's a calligraphy pen too. So I'm, I'll be focusing on a calligraphy nib which as I understand the concept is pretty much an italic nib but without the nib tipping. So if you are to look at a nib like that. So straight on, a regular fountain pen nib will be rounded. It'll have these balls of iridium welded to the, the nib. If you have an italic nib or a stub nib, this these will be very angular. But with the calligraphy nibs I own, there is no such tipping material. It's just flat. Now, I have three here. Whoops. Now I have two. Um, don't drop your pens. Um, I have three that I want to discuss today. This will be a three-way shootout. Uh, I have a Brownsville pen. Brownsville is a Dutch brand of calligraphy. Well, not, not calligraphy. Of, 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 I think mostly pencils, but also uh, some pens. Uh, I think it's now Brownsville Sakura, so they, they um, merged with another company. Or, uh, then I have a Lamy Joy, which is a very big pen, as you can see here. A very, you know, desk pen uh, shaped. And we have a Pilot Parallel pen, uh, which is also quite elongated. I chose for these three because these are regular calligraphy nibs marketed as calligraphy nibs and not meant for everyday using. Except, perhaps, for the Lamy Joy. I'll cover these pens one by one. I'll start with the, the one with the finest nib which is the Lamy. I have on here a 1.9 millimeter italic nib, so calligraphy nib I would say. It came with three. There was also 1.1 and a 1.5. I won't be using those uh, nibs here. If you're interested in seeing them, please have a look at my review of the Lamy Joy. In that review I write with all three nibs. Here I'll just take the widest nib which is 1.9 millimeters. I think it is a decent pen, has some nice features such as an ink window which allows you to see how much ink is left. It's a bit difficult here because I put black ink in a converter but it's it's you can see how much ink is left which is a good thing. Um, it ha it's, it's fairly nice to use. This, this long barrel works. I think the grip section, this looks very safari or vista like. I think it's the same section so I guess you could put this on the uh, safari or the vista if you would like. Um, I really see the point because you can also just take the nib off, but you know, whatever. Um, so it's, it's a pretty nice calligraphy nib. This is the only nib which I would say you could also use for everyday writing. Uh, unless you have very small handwriting, but I think for, for, uh, for me, for example, I, I've written people letters with this. When we move up, uh, we go to this Brownsville calligraphy pen. Uh, it, this came with a bunch of nibs in uh, varying nib widths, some very fine, some very broad. This is the broadest, four broad, four um, B. So it's it's um, very very wide. I cannot use this for everyday writing. It's it's too broad for that. And yes, I like broad nibs. Uh, this I think 
of the three pens I have here, this one looks most like a regular fountain pen. And then we have the Pilot Parallel pen, uh, which is unique, and uh, not because of its shape, but because of its nib. The nib is basically two very thin plates of metal, very thin, as you can see here, um, sort of put together, so parallel, right? You have two parallel sheets of metal, which are completely flat on the top, and what makes this so unique is that it gives an extremely broad line on the downstrokes and a very fine line in these uh, horizontal or, or diagonal strokes, depending on how you hold the pen. Also, you can write with the very corner of the nib. So instead of putting it down on the paper like this, you know, like a paintbrush, you can just take the corner and write with that. I'll show you that in the writing sample. This sounds a little abstract, I, I can imagine, but you'll see what I mean. Um, these come in four different nib widths. I, I have the broadest here, six millimeters, which is very wide. Again, this is not something you would use for everyday writing. That I think that is impossible, unless your letters are this big. Um, so there you have it. What is the advantage of a fountain pen calligraphy nib over a dip nib, right? Because a lot of people say dip nibs are best for calligraphy. Well, in principle, I agree. A dip nib, I'll, I'll try to show you that, allows for very sharp angulations of the letters. So it's, it's, it's a very sharp, well-defined line. With a dip nib, with a fountain pen nib, it's usually a little bit more rounded off. If you make a fountain pen nib very, very sharp at the corners, then it will cut into the paper. And these dip nibs are made, as you can see, this dip nib is actually an oblique, right? It's cut like that, at an angle. Uh, and that, that works. The problem with the dip nib, however, is that it's you need to dip it. And this is a browser nib which has a, an ink reservoir, which you well, I'm not sure why you can see that there's there's something on top there, um, which holds a few drops of ink and allows you to write a few words, and then you have to dip it again. And dip nibs without an ink reservoir, it's really you write a few letters, dip it again, and write on. With the fountain pens, you can just keep writing. Uh, this is not a good example, I just removed the converter, but I, I've shown you that with the, the Joy. That's a regular Lamy converter, so you can just keep writing as with a fountain pen. Therefore, I think that if you are learning calligraphy, it's a very good thing to, to try and use a fountain pen like this. It will not give you the beautiful results that a dip nib will give you, but you can get very good results, for example, with a parallel. I, I, I don't think this underperforms when you compare it to a dip nib. Um, and it's just easier. When you practice in calligraphy, you just usually just go like A, 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 right? You just practice one letter all the time. If you have to dip the nib continuously, that gets very tiresome very fast. So with this, you can just keep practicing, and I think that's a very nice touch. Okay, so as far as I'm concerned, that's all I have to tell you about these pens. They're all converter filled. Uh, they all take regular fountain pen inks, and um, that's all there's to it. Much more interesting, uh, I think, it will be to actually see a writing sample. So that's what we'll do next. I hope this is going to be useful, and um, I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Okay, let's start with the first pen. This is the Lamy Joy. I'll do some regular cursive to give you a bit of an idea of the width of the nib. This is a 1.9 millimeter calligraphy nib gives a nice amount of line variation. Uh, it's fairly wet, but as you can see, this nib is still, uh, I would say, fine enough to use for normal writing. Right? I mean, this, this doesn't look out of place. If I move up a notch, this nib is, I think, more than three millimeters. Now, it's probably not more. It's, it's, I think it's close to three millimeters. This is the Brownsale nib. Um, now, as you can see, I haven't really measured it, sorry. But this is the widest nib, it's a quadruple broad, so 4B. Um, this is serious nibbage, and using this for normal everyday writing, as I do here, is quite difficult. As you can see, the, the little bowls of the E's are filled in because it's very, very wide. It's difficult to write with unless you have huge handwriting. Um, so this really is a calligraphy nib. Again, fairly wet, a little prone to, to skipping. That's just, I haven't used this nib for a while, so it just has to get ink into the feed well. And then finally, 
uh, I will use the Pilot Parallels. Now, regular writing with this nib uh, is almost impossible. This is six millimeters. Um, to give you an idea, this is a Delta Dolce Vita in broad, and this is a broad nib indeed, which doesn't write right now. There we go. Um, this is the type of line that nib lays down if it writes. Um, so if you compare that with this. And you see that this is some serious, serious nibbage. One of the nice things of the parallels is that you can actually, because it's just two plates of metal, this nib, uh, you can actually just put it on the paper like this and create some pretty thin hair lines. You can even write with the actually the corners of the nib, giving you super fine lines, which is very, very useful if you're doing Old English, for example. I'll show you that in a second. Okay, so this is just to give you a rough idea of the, the, the pens, um, you know, the, the, the nibs, what you can expect. Um, I think we should do a little bit of calligraphy with, with these nibs. Now, for example, this Joy, no posting here, that's not a good idea. Um, the Joy, I think, is, is, is very suited, uh, well suited for, for foundational calligraphy. Um, which doesn't have any capitals. Uh, so that is a, a type of calligraphy that I can... that's not a good T. This should be higher. Uh, I, I recommend this to people who are starting out with calligraphy. And the reason for that is that it's, it's relatively easy to learn. Uh, I'm doing this fairly quickly, so mistakes should be forgiven, I'm afraid. Um, it's very easy to learn, and as you can see, it's very close to everyday writing. And it, it teaches you to have a good look at the uh, the shape of letters and that's that's a very useful thing um, that's why calligraphy is so beneficial that was a very bad G haven't done foundational for a while there we go, that's getting better um, so that's very useful, and because it's it's still a relatively fine nib as to as far as calligraphy nibs go, um, I think that's that's pretty useful. If you were to do something like gothic with this, um, then that's also quite possible. You see more of my gothic videos, then you probably know that I prefer the word "got," German for "God," to do gothic demonstrations with. It's it's short, but it's also quite nice. Um, maybe a little line there. Something like that. Okay. Now, if we move up a notch, Brunzel, um, of course you can do any type of calligraphy with, with any nib, right? So I can also do foundational with this nib. Right, and then I'll adjust the paper a little bit. Um, for some reason, for me, it always gets easier to do this with broader nibs. I'm not a very my my, my handwriting is not very refined. So the broader the nib, the easier this gets for me. Now, doing some gothic. That, that matter of, of refinedness, if that is a word. Um, that's also one of the reasons I cannot do copper plate. I just, I just can't do it. I lack the, the, the fine motor skills required for that. Whereas Gothic is big and angular, and, and that's, that's, for me that's, that's much easier. I'm not saying it's perfect, but it's, it's easier to do. Okay, now we move on to serious nibbage. I love this pen. Fantastic. 
beautiful, significant lines. Truly rich, wet ink laid down on the paper. The beauty of um, foundational is that everything is rounded. It's a very nice script in that regard. I'm also screwing up the angulation of the nib a little bit. Um, it's, it's too wide. I, you see, with calligraphy, it matters how you angle the nib. If you, if I put it like this, then I get a really right in that. It's just parallel to the paper. If I put it like this, I know I'm exaggerating, but then I get a much finer line. And every script requires a specific angulation. This is one of the more difficult things of calligraphy, I think, trying to keep that angulation constant. Okay, so there we go. A um, little bit of Gothic. This time I won't make it Gothic, I'll make it Old English. Old English is, is very similar to, to Gothic, but it has some more embellishments, uh, which is something I, I enjoy. Um, see here, it, it really comes in useful to be able to use the corners of the nib with these very fine lines. You cannot do this with any of those pens. So that was just some old English um, fantastic nibs. Now, the, so you can get these in, in finer nibs, you know, I already told you that. So it, it, it's just to give you a bit of an overview. Which of these is the best calligraphy pen? I love the parallel. I think it's great that you can use it for these, these finer lines. Uh, it's very pleasant to use. It's very um, ergonomic. It's, it's pleasant to, to, to touch and to, to, to feel. Uh, and to hold, basically. The other two pens are not bad in that regard either, uh, but it, I, I think that I just love the, the parallels. Okay, now what about a dip nib? What is the added benefit of a dip nib? Well, I, I have one here. Uh, this is a, a 5 millimeter Brause nib, uh, which has this little thing there, that's an ink reservoir. As you can see, there's a little loop. Ink gets trapped in there, and then it's released gently, which is very pleasant. Uh, because that means that you don't have to dip and, and re-dip all the time. Uh, it actually holds quite a bit of ink. I'm going to dip that nib in ink now. I haven't used it for a while, so I hope this is going to work out. Uh, one of the beautiful features of this is that uh, it's very, very sharp. So, you can get these very nice thin, th broad, thin lines. Uh, it's very difficult to do that with a uh, a fountain pen, uh, and if you don't believe me, uh, this is just okay. This is skipping anyway, so that's not really helpful. Uh, but it's it's with well, a fountain pen, it's just not as sharp. You see, this is thinner, but this is pretty much a hairline, and that's it's a difference. Um, it's more of a feel than something you can actually see. I think. But if I were to do some, some simple gothic stuff with this, um, there is more resistance on the paper, that is uh, for sure. Look how, how beautifully sharp you can offset these lines, right? I'm, I'm really screwing up there. Let me redo the O. You 
see this is flat and this is flat and with a uh, fountain pen this is much more rounded off so that's a big difference the pilot parallel comes very close to the quality of a dib nib now it doesn't say God so I guess we should just make it say good that's a little bit exaggerated but okay we're having fun see again you get this this sharp these sharp lines you can do things like this which are extremely sharp and pointy and angular uh, and with a, a fountain pen uh, that's just more difficult you always have some bit of rounding off um, so that's the, that would be the advantage of a dip nib uh, I'll gladly do a video on dip nibs if people think it's it's useful I, um, I happen to have a few uh, quite a number of, of, of dip nibs uh, some very fine, some very broad so people interested in that just, just let me know and I'll uh, I'll do something. So that, that was the shootout between these three calligraphy fountain pens. I hope this was useful. And um, when it comes to picking a winner, I already told you that I, I think the Pilot Parallel is a fantastic pen for calligraphy. Um, so that's, that's all there's to it. And um, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.